Hi, in this video, we're looking at binary ionic compounds. Now let's break this down just for a second. Binary means two parts. That means two elements within it. Ionic is uh, metal and non-metal, where we have a transfer of electrons. A metal gives a non-metal certain number of electrons. And then a compound is just a, a, a molecule. It's a substance that's made up of two or more different elements. So smush that all together and you get binary ionic compounds. Essentially, we're looking at one metal, one non-metal things. How do we name them? How do we write formulas for them? And so let's kind of start with our unit outline here. I've got three different types of bonds, ionic, covalent, and metallic. And we've already checked off two of these seven little subtopics here, diatomic elements and metals. So in this video, we're living in the ionic area. And in particular, we're going to look at binary compounds. So that's where we are for this one. So Let's just start with formula to name. If I give you the formula, can you write the name? Well, here's how you do that. The name of any binary ionic compound is just the metal name with a space and then the non-metal ide name. Now, again, if you need those non-metal ide names, go back to that intro to names and formulas video. That's got all of them right there. So let's do a few examples. NaCl is maybe the most common, the most notorious binary ionic compound. This is table salt, sodium chloride. And there it is. We know sometimes what the names of these things are because they're more common to us. So that's the name for this. It's sodium and not chlorine, but chloride. We're going to change the ending on that because chlorine in this situation is an ion. So that, that's what uh, gives us the name changes there. Let's do one that's maybe a little less common. MgO. Well, the metal in this is magnesium and the non-metal is oxygen. But again, I'm gonna use that ide name for oxygen, so this just becomes magnesium oxide. Here's another one, uh, CaBr2. Calcium is the metal in this one, bromine is the non-metal, so calcium bromide. Again, you gotta switch that ending there. Here's another one, Al2S3. We've got aluminum sulfide. That sulfur becomes sulfide there. Okay, so try some of these on your own, pause the video, Write these down or type them up, however you do it, and here are the answers. NaF is sodium fluoride. AlCl3 is aluminum chloride. We've got K2O as potassium oxide. And MgBr2 is magnesium bromide. Okay, so what if we went in the opposite direction, though? Could you do the name to the formula? In other words, if I gave you the name of something, could you figure out the formula for that? Now, that's a little trickier. Because for this, you really have to look at charges and then swap them. So let's do one here, lithium chloride. Now, lithium is in group one of the periodic table. So that means when lithium becomes an ion, it develops a plus one charge. Chloride is in group 17, and that develops a minus one charge. So if you know that, and you can even write on your paper, Li plus one, Cl minus one, once you have those, you can crisscross them just like we've been doing the past few videos where we've just been writing ionic formulas. So the formula for this one here is LiCl. Uh, here's another one. We've got aluminum fluoride. Aluminum is in group 13. That's got a plus three charge on it. Fluoride is also a halogen, just like in the last example. It's got a minus one charge because it's in group 17. It just gains that one extra electron to fill its valence shell. And so we've got three plus and one minus, that results in ALF3. Here's another one. This one's strontium nitride. Strontium is in group two. Nitrogen's in group 15. Strontium would have a plus two charge. Nitrogen or nitride would have a minus three charge. Remember, if any uh, element's in group 15, it's gonna develop a negative three charge when it gains those three electrons to fill its valence shell. So we've got a plus two and a minus three crisscross and you get SR3N2. And uh, I think this is one more, uh, sodium phosphide. Na is in group one, so it gets a plus one charge. Phosphide is in group 15, so it gets a minus three charge. That results in Na3P. Okay, so try these ones on your own. Pause the video, have a periodic table nearby if you need one. And here are the answers. We've got strontium chloride SrCl2. Lithium oxide is Li2O. Rubidium nitride is Rb3N. And then, of course, aluminum phosphide. They're plus, plus three and minus three. So you just need one of each. You get ALP or ALP. So that's it. Binary ionic compounds. It's just two parts. 
There really are no exceptions to this. Just remember you have a metal that's always listed first, not only in the name, but also in the formula. Um, in the name, you throw a space after the metal name, and then you put the non-metal eyed name. Now, in our future videos, we're gonna build on this. What happens if the metal can form multiple charges? Or what happens if one of these binary pieces is a polyatomic ion? Well, those are kind of the two layers that we build on with this exact concept. This is a good place to start with ionic substances. Thank you.